neighbor's house is on fire. They're also getting a structure fire at Main and Oak. Main and Oak, two new structures burning. Break. Welcome to the Scanner Group Crowdsource Crime and Safety Podcast with Ryan Mallory and Jared Bannery. Hi, I'm Ryan Mallory from Jackson County Scanner Group. And I'm Matt Roberts from the Greenway Recovery Project. And we wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Greenway. Uh, recent fires, recent arsons. There's been a lot going on down there, but there has been for the last <laughs> few years, right? It has been a hotbed of uh, all sorts of activity. And of course, as we roll into this season where we're having a legendary drought, we're having heat the hottest summer we've had ever on record so far yeah and the irrigation water's off at my no, house no irrigation yeah. water no water in any of the reservoirs uh the risk of fire is obviously on everyone's mind we are less than a year past the almeda fire and there are a lot of folks who are freaking out every time the lightning strikes every time i, I would go to say air. that part of the valley definitely has some ptsd from that absolutely, I, absolutely. I talked to a lot of people a lady last night that wanted information about a very specific fire that I posted. It wasn't even a Greenway fire, but she's so terrified of fires now because she had to run from the last one. Yeah, you know, and, and a lot of people did. A lot of people lost everything in those fires, and the Greenway was the corridor that that fire took to devastate two cities and, and more. So, you know, that's a, that's a big issue right now. People are concerned, and people are seeing the level of activity that's going on and has been going on for a couple of years. Uh, we were talking earlier about the number of fires that the fire department had uh, said were responsible uh, on, the, on the Greenway by Greenway campers. And last year, the number was... Yeah, there was uh, 428 fires they responded to. More than 200 of them were on the Greenway specifically. And you were telling me there's a, a new number thus far since the camping orders. And it's been a few months. According to the... Fire Marshal, as of, I believe, this last week, there are 81 fires on the Greenway that happened since the enactment of the anti-camping ban, which was the end of May, so June, July, or no, it was beginning of May, May, June, July. So that's three months, 81 fires, all attributed to human-caused, camp-caused conditions on the Greenway. Um, that's targeting more than 300 fires if that's on track for the full year. If, yeah. More than 300 fires um, doesn't feel like the camping ordinance reduced the fires. And you know, that's to say nothing. Uh, livability team, the city trying to work on these problems, they're doing a good job with what they've been handed. Very much so. And there are a lot of factors that are playing into this that, that maybe the public isn't aware of. First of all, they're dealing with a very politically sensitive issue. There are people who very much support uh, the homeless uh, ability to live on the Greenway. Yeah. They, they think it's a, a right and nowhere in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness does that actually exist. But people do feel that they have a right to live wherever they want to live. The second part of that is staffing. You know, if it were a full-time detail of 10 officers, it would probably be done now. Livability team is three, maybe four officers, right? Uh, and a sergeant, and then there's some parks department, some CSOs, and some other people that do these, and they're only clearing about ten camps per week. Yeah, because one of the goals is not to get people displaced, but to actually find them a place to be. To try to find, help them find the willingness to accept some help to go willingness some, and go ability someplace. to bring themselves yeah. up to. Uh, position where they, they can be fruitful in society. I know they give 72 hours of notice, and I mean, if I had to be out in 72 hours, I'd probably make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we're, we're seeing a lot of people um, uh, just abandoning their camps. Yeah. A lot of what the camps are these days are leftover debris and detritus from the people who've been living there 72 hours prior. Yeah. Um, there are still a few occupied camps, but once they get noticed, Get the Camping notice. gear, refuse, human uh, waste. everything from <laughs> cans and food wrappers and stuff like that. Yeah, human waste, tons of needles. Oh, um, I had are, I had read shocking. that they uh, since the camping ordinance had renewed, moved twenty four full size semi driven delivered containers from the Greenway. According That's to the chief, of as of trash. this last week, five hundred and five cubic yards Whoa. of trash have been removed. 
I moved uh, over two weekends five yards of sand. Weighs three thousand pounds. The amount of work that went into picking up that trash. I mean, I got I got to have a little love for our public servants that do that such stuff. Uh, I don't want my kid or uh, grandkids walking off uh, off the trail and off into the woods and stepping on a needle. Right, right. And it's none of these people signed up for this job. No. Aside from the livability team, those people chose to go out there, yep. make contact, try to help these people, and then of course enforce the law. But the parks department. You know, they figure yeah. they'd be emptying trash cans, mowing yard, mowing lawns, and, and, you know, trimming bushes. This is above and beyond and a true risk. There yeah. was a point in time when we had work release crews working to help clean up the greenway. It's not safe for them. It's not safe. They cannot train them fast enough to put them out there and mm. make it a legit work task for those people without putting them in too great a danger. It's, it just it can't the, be done. The folks that work on the livability team, I've got to talk to a lot of them. Uh, Josephson, Kirkpatrick, uh, all of those guys, they do really care about getting folks help. I, I, Absolutely. I know I see some of the, I don't even know what I'd call it. The go, rhetoric. The rhetoric, yeah. Go, go buy from some of the people that support people living on the Greenway, and they always want to attack the cops that show up to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And they get showed up to deal with it because citizens call and there's ordinance that they have to enforce, but they do it with utmost care. So if they can find somebody that's having a, a, a mental breakdown or a drug psychosis issue and they're flipping out, they like to film that. And when the police need to arrest them or vacate them somehow because they are disorderly and a whole lot of other things, love to go to the tape and Oh, and yeah. try to trash the officers. Well, and police it's are just an not right. Target. Police yeah, are an easy target. They're, they're Authority taking, is an easy tar target yeah, in society. They're, today. they're taking action on, on laws that are on the books that have to be enforced. And generally, somebody doesn't like that. You yeah. know, there's always going to be somebody who feels like the police are in the wrong. And yeah, why, do we, case, why do we have to have uh, uh, speed limits? That's probably yeah. mine. <laughs> 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 We've all gotten a ticket or sure. two, perhaps. But, uh, yeah, they are making a difference. They're out there doing the, the hard work, which is getting people up out of those camps, getting them into therapy, getting them into programs, getting them Some kind of transitional housing, housing yeah. where, there's, where there's food, fresh, clean, running water. But one, of the, one of the biggest arguments that I, I deal with online are the folks who simply want to go from point A being living in the bushes, peeing in the bushes, defecating in the bushes, and stashing their needles in the bushes of the Greenway to full-time permanent free housing. Yeah. And that it just is a, a leap that it will never happen. Yeah, it it can't physically, fiscally, it can't happen. And people who have no vested interest in what's going on to them. They haven't worked for it. They don't have any sweat equity, aren't going to appreciate it, and it's going to become a wreck yeah. in, a, in a certain amount of time. You have, you have to want to. You have to want to have mental health treatment if you have those issues. You have to want to get clean and have a better life. Even if the resources are available, they have the homeless camp, the mission, there are beds available. Every night when I talk to folks at those two places, and more on the way, the Red Roof Inn is being cleaned up. It's going to be transitional housing. Three different. Kelly trends, shelf, yeah. Shelter, possibly a second uh, urban camp out near Crater Lake Ford. Mm -hmm. uh, the pub said, the public hoping. is trying with their tax money. Right. Our elected officials who are elected to figure kind of things, kind of things out are trying to and, and, and putting forth some things that help, definitely. Absolutely. And Absolutely. the nonprofits are definitely helping out. And that's what, that's what I expect as an American citizen. I think... All, most of these jobs are for nonprofits, but we have to deal with them because they do have policing issues involved. Absolutely, it's, and it's it's a public health and safety risk, which yeah. puts it in the the, the ballywick for a lot of agencies that wouldn't normally have to deal with it. So, I used to ride ride bikes with my kids on the trail. My my kids are all adults now. I'm not real comfortable about uh, getting my two year old granddaughter down there with a set of training wheels someday on the greenway. I'm, I don't plan on doing that. It might be the south end that stays kind of clean because there's not a lot of population or something like that. But yeah, riding I, through Medford or at night. <laughs> I, I do think, though, that one of the keys to getting 
the green wave back into the public hands, making it more a place where we can feel safe, where people aren't in danger of stepping on needles all the time or getting mugged or get the get the citizens out there, huh? Yeah. Get people on the greenway. Yeah. Take your family down there. Bring people with you to make a large group. Walk the greenway. See what's going on for one. Educate yourself. Get first hand eyes on the degradation and hammer time that's gone on down there. It's it's really sad. Uh, also though, take the greenway back. It's our greenway. Yeah. And People aren't going to want to camp there if there's people walking by all the time. They don't want eyes on them. Well, the, the, the camps will get cleaned up sooner because they'll get seen quicker. And exactly. right now I feel like law enforcement, even with the camping ban and some authority to do something about it, they're still playing what I like to call Groundhog Day, you know, the movie with Bill Murray where they cleaned it up, but it's back again. Well, there is some of that. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. By the time you, you start at one end and by the time you're at the other – it needs painting again on the other end. And the Greenway is kind of like that. Um, I think that the city is probably at a point where we are likely to have the whole distance of it cleaned once and then the, the mitigating of the remaining camps and the ones that kind of fill in the empty spaces once the cleanup is done is going to be much faster. It gets easier and easier as it time does. goes on when you it reduce does. the total number of them and you only have to do the cleanup. Those resources all get directed to the same thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, we should probably talk about sources of fires because when I was growing up, it was forest fires. Mm -hmm. uh, Dad was a logger and uh, worked in mills and things like that. And the lumber industry supplied uh, a lot of money to communities in the Pacific Northwest. And... Uh, Aside from those fires in town, it would be like somebody had an electrical short in their house. Somebody forgot and left the fried chicken on the stove. Accidents mm -hmm. you know, or mm -hmm. lightning. We still have lightning fires, mm -hmm. and there are still accidents. And, some odd yesterday. Yeah. And act, oh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was nuts. Watching the map on that thing is pretty interesting. It was pretty loud in my house, too. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, people often ask me, and I've had this question lots of times, how do drugs cause a fire? Well, it's not necessarily the drugs, but the paraphernalia and the supplies used to camp on the greenway, uh, along with dry grass, trees that have been burnt at one end already that light up pretty Absolutely. easy. All of those things culminate into uh, you know somebody with a drug problem, lighting up a torch or a lighter. Uh, they put a strap on their arm usually. When you're shooting up drugs, when you've made it to the greenway, you're generally shooting it up, whether it's meth or heroin, or you're probably taking what you can get. Uh, when you shoot up, you let that rubber band loose, and when you let that rubber band loose, you get a hell of a rush. Uh, sometimes people pass out. This is the point at, at, oh, when overdoses happen, and I have no problem with Narcan being delivered on the trail. Uh, and that rush, do you knock over the burner in a nylon tent on a nylon sleeping bag? Uh, do you knock it over in the dry, dry grass? Those are the drug started fires. There's also arson fires, which are mm -hmm. people in mental health and drug psychosis issues. Or with an axe to grind. Yeah. That's, Somebody that's pissed a, off about something. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think it's, it's wrong to say that some of those fires are purely accidental. Yeah. The point is burning anything on the greenway is a poor choice and illegal. Yeah. There is no fire allowed hasn't been since its inception 10 no. years ago, 15 you can, years yeah, ago? Longer than that. I think I've been here for close to 30 years. And uh, while I was in college, they were they were building it. And a big piece was built. And uh, by the time my kids were out of the house, the whole thing was built. Yeah. yeah. The, the reality is that even if it's a camping fire that gets away from you or your meth pipe that sparks, you know, dead grass or you know, your, your warming fire or whatever. I would guess that very few of those people are trying to start a fire that gets away. I doubt it, yeah. I think it's an accident, absolutely. But the fact that they're there doing it in the first place is the 100% chance of curtailment of Greenway fires. The fact that they're there, the fact that they're doing it is literally... 100% of the fires on the Greenway being caused. Absolutely. Removing the campers, 
removes the risk to this yeah. to the community. It really does. I, I really think uh, um, getting handouts on the Greenway is citizens that have very caring hearts that want to help people that are homeless in despair, but they're bringing nylon tents and sleeping bags, and then you don't even get me started. The stabbing wagon, you've heard of that? Yeah, all right. Yeah, a lady named Melissa Jones that likes to scream at the town council. But uh, paraphernalia, lighters, torches, lots of stuff gets delivered down there. I don't have any problem with food and water, and I don't think we can probably... Uh, well, we were discussing it, and you were explaining a little bit about uh, the legalities of preventing somebody from bringing supplies to the Greenway. But those supplies are what catch on fire. So I don't know if the public can do anything about that. It all comes down to what you're saying. It's not supposed to be there. It's an area that's deemed uninhabitable, not because it's not a pretty place, but because things catch on fire down there really well, easily. And it's also, by definition, a riparian greenway. That's right. Which means... The fish is, and the ground-dwelling birds. It is protected habitat and watershed for the wild and scenic Rogue River. And all of the human waste that is deposited there, all of the needles, all of the trash tires, plastic wrap, six-pack wrappers, all of that that get deposited from camps into that creek go all the way to the ocean. and Via the Rogue River. Via the Rogue River, which is so a wild and scenic river, which is protected waterway. And Bear Creek is actually also protected habitat for coho salmon. That's right. And we There's posted a picture earlier this year of poached salmon just hanging on the fence. It wasn't like anyone even actually caught it to eat it. Yeah. They simply caught it to catch it, left it hanging on a chain link fence up by the Highway 62. What a waste. Back. Yeah. And it, it, what about the ground dwelling birds? Like you said, the geese, the ducks, the, the other animals that, that inhabit that area are now having to compete, A, for space, B, for resources, and C, dealing with the pollution in the water that's being deposited there every day. I had, I had an experience with that very early on in the green wave. Part of it at the south end of town was built. I was on a talent parks commission, and we uh, um, there wasn't a dog leash law in, in talent. They were having some problems with dogs running around, and like most towns progress to, they needed a leash law. And one of the things I thought is, if you're going to put a leash law on people that live here that haven't had one, we need to find a way to give them a dog park or a place that they can take their dogs to run. Um, so uh, Lynn Newber Newbury Park, we looked into allowing dogs to run in that park, and and it happened, and for a while it was the Talent Dog Park. They built another one next to the police station that works out better. We had to check with Fish and Wildlife before we could even do it because if it bothered the salmon or the or the ground-dwelling birds, that was a problem. All Absolutely. the people that were making pitches about it being a riparian area are some of the people that are now also feeding the homeless. Mm -hmm. And I feel for them. They have good hearts. They want to. They want something beautiful in town. Uh, they don't want people to be in despair, but those two thoughts are in conflict. The riparian area that was built... Uh, on, on a lot of their words and efforts. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, what what destroys riparian areas? Exactly, human mm -hmm. habitation. Yes. And um, the city of Medford recognizes and has even mentioned in the city council meeting where the camping ordinance was discussed that the DEQ has played with Medford with very kid gloves to this point because yeah. of the levels of, of pollution and degradation of the environment around Bear Creek. Uh, the EQ just released the E. coli tests again, and E. coli in Bear Creek is off the chart. They're recommending no physical contact with the water in Bear Creek at all at this very time. So, so, so it's even become a dangerous situation for the people that want to live down there. Absolutely. They're going to get burned. It's always been a dangerous yeah. situation for people who live down there. Two murders last year, Yeah. or actually prior and, to the early uh, this year, of uh, people there. Women, women arriving reports. at the homeless camp are uh, happy to tell folks that, uh, not happy to tell folks that if you live on the Greenway and you're a woman, you're likely going to get raped and not just once. Mm -hmm. And these are the friends that everyone's talking about. Yeah. That, you know, these are our friends down here. Your these friends are, are praying these on are, each other. These are our community members, uh, the, yeah. the ones that want help. I mean, they could, they could be great community members someday. I've seen people pull their, excuse my French, asses out of the dirt, out of the gutter, and build their lives into something special. People I want that. To, I want yeah. that for those people on the trail. Absolutely, and people need to quit telling them that the system is against them. Yeah, the system is not. 
the, the livability team is not against anybody. The livability team would love to be 100% successful and get every person they contact off the streets into treatment. There's 43, into or 43 or 48 people they've helped since yeah. they've been cleaning up the green ran and got them into other situations. But the, the false narrative that's being played to the people living on the greenway is that the system is against you. You're incapable of doing it. You are not... You're never going to get into a shelter. You're never going to get any transitional housing. There's not enough. There's too many high barriers. We'll help on you. Here's a sandwich, on. a sleeping bag, a tent, and, and some drug needles. paraphernalia. And, and it's not, that thing is not a needle exchange. Needle, needle exchanges happen at parks in big cities, and you, they're trying to mitigate disease. AIDS is how it started. And you, you hand in your dirty needle, you get a clean one, and, and also so you don't infect yourself. You, get infe also, you shoot up a lot, you're going to get some infections. You use there in a cases yeah. you actually are given a little room to go into and and you know do your thing and then they monitor you for overdosing what's going on right now is people are handing out huge amounts of needles i mean you, and you see it in the photos you see in the cleanup photos. it's a free-for-all like hundreds and hundreds of needles everywhere no sharps containers i've, I've yet to see a single photo uh, uh, from the Greenway that shows a sharps container that's being used no. maybe a used two -liter I, I, bottle, I, i've but, never heard the stab and wagon picked up Dirty needles. Never heard that part. No, I don't believe so. And don't when I look so. at the pictures, you know, we have pictures behind us here, uh, buckets and piles of needles. I didn't even think there was such a thing until I saw the pictures. You could have described it, and I would have wouldn't have. Yeah. I would have been like, "Come on, buckets! You got a coffee can out there and something? You have a hundred needles in it? No, thousands, piles of needles." Well, and it's all done in the name of harm reduction. All right, that's that's the buzzword that that groups use. That's right. To, and and there is a certain amount reduction it does reduce the risk of infection if people are using clean needles uh, what they're doing nothing about what they're doing is reducing the risk of overdose because they're just handing out boxes sure. of needles and sending them off into the bushes or, or infection from the dirty li living conditions i mean how, well, it doesn't matter how clean your needle is if your arm isn't clean right and the conditions you're living in those get inside that what is an open wound every time you shoot up and you get a track mark, you get a line of open wounds, no matter where it is on your body. Those kind of living conditions, no showers, no baths, yeah. nothing to get clean with. Yeah, absolutely. That, that becomes a huge problem for them. And it becomes a huge problem for the community as a whole. What they're doing is spreading the vector for disease to everybody who's on the greenway. Anybody who might encounter one of these discarded needles has that possibility of getting infected. And that's not a risk that anybody wants to take with their family really members. Sad that's situation. not a risk that, and, and so what they're doing is actually creating a hot zone for potential infection to the general public. Now, I can see them saying, oh, it's just for the just for the people, you know, the addicts who, who were helping. But the unintended consequences of their actions can definitely impact anybody who happens to be there. Kid picks up a nice bright orange tipped uh, needle, shows mom and Little dad. Little kids don't know. You know, oh, look what I found. And they stick themselves with it or stick the dog with it or whomever. The risk to the general public is amplified by the, what they're doing down there. Yeah. And, and, and people may say what you're doing with your veins is your own business, but I don't want to be a, I don't want my bloodstream exposed to what you're doing. Well, no, nobody does. Nobody does. And I'm assuming that, yeah, now that's just, that's an assumption. Never mind. I'm not going to go there. But, <laughs> I have a few of those myself. You know, um, the, the reality is that fire risk, infection risk, ecological damage, all of the issues we've talked about for the past half an hour or so, all are mitigated by removing the campers from the greenway. Yeah. It doesn't, it's it doesn't simple. mean they can't have help. It just means that they can't have help there aside from help to get off the greenway. And we are very pro-help. Yeah. We are very pro-help. I, I support any agency that is expanding services. Uh, got into a heated argument with somebody the other day, and I was, I was actually wrong. Their, their, their premise was we need more um, mitigating services at hospitals for people who can... You know, they come in after an overdose, or they come in during an overdose, or are going through DTs, and there's no place for them to go after the fact to stay clean. They go back out on the greenway, get a whole new handful of needles, and it's back to the grind. 
So I actually very much agree with this person's argument. What I don't agree with is free houses for everybody because they're homeless and everyone else is going to pay for it. That's yeah. just a, a pie in the sky. Socialist oh, idea, yeah. I'll say it. It's, it's just never going to happen. Um, you, can't, you can't make people take help that don't want it. You just can't. Well, and I equate, I mean, okay. You, you can, we, but. We want these people to get strong. <laughs> yeah. We want these people to be able to stand up on their own two feet, walk off the greenway, find a job, find a place to live, et cetera. And some of those steps are tough. Yeah. But every growth process is painful. In human life, every growth process is painful. That's right. If you want to get strong, you have to work out. You have to exercise your muscles. No one else can do that for you. That's right. No one can lift the weight for no, an Nobody can pull the cheeseburger out of my mouth for me, right? I wouldn't even try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but these people have to lift their own weight. They have to, A, want to get off drugs, and B, have to make the steps themselves. Absolutely. You can have a spotter. If you're lifting heavy weight, absolutely have a spotter. Make sure that bar doesn't come crashing down on you. But you have to lift that weight. There's some beautiful opportunities here with, you know, Lots of different organizations, um, Rock Recovery Center, Addiction Treatment Center. Rogue Retreat is hiring Rogue, for five paid positions uh, today. They, and they kick butt. Man. They really do a great they, job. They do a so. great job. And even out of the area, there, there are life challenge places where uh, somebody gets you to one of those throughout the United States. And you commit to a year, and they don't just help you detox and learn about staying clean. They help you with job skills, Absolutely. leadership skills. People come out of those Basic on fire. Basic housekeeping and money management skills. Yes. People yeah. come out of those after a year absolutely on fire. A, a lot of people that go through uh, a really low low, like mm -hmm. everybody has their different rock bottom. You know? Absolutely. Some people are like, oh, I missed my park car payment. I'm done with this crap. Right. Uh, other people are like, I'll clear to the greenway mm -hmm. or, or worse. And... Um, when that happens, that that rock bottom, um, it, when it's low like that, I see a lot of people that make it out of that low low, and they have a fire and a passion for helping other people find their path. Absolutely. They become counselors. Some of the best counselors yeah. I've ever met were people who had addiction problems in the past. Yeah, so so that's caring treatment. That, Absolutely. That society in general, nonprofits, cities, the county, the state, the citizens. We're paying the taxes, and a lot of people work in it or volunteer money. That's that's a lot of love that's out there. You have to be willing to accept it. And I think the bulk of them are capable yeah. of pulling themselves out. They are simply told that the system won't accept them. Yeah. The barriers are too high. It, and, and the one struggle I have with AA, which is a tremendous treatment program, yeah. But if you tell somebody you're going to be an addict for the rest of your life, you're always tied to that. Yeah. And I don't necessarily agree with that. I'm not a treatment person. I don't know. Sure. But my thought is tell these people that they have a chance. Yeah. Tell them that there is. you take one step towards a goal, it's one step away from where your low point is right now. That's right. And if you can lay out some goals and just attack each of them a little bit every day, eventually you get to check one off and that... That feels like a million bucks. At first, it doesn't replace the feeling, the dopamine that you get from taking drugs. But at some point, it's just as good. People people that are doing well in life and excelling in business or their job after being addicted say they'll never go back to it. They'll never, but this well, is just there, that, yeah, so much better. There is a deeper satisfaction in taking good, solid steps for yourself. It's but real. There is poisoning. Yourself. It's real. It's it tangible. It, real. It's not I'm high and I feel fine now. Right, right. And, and so, you know, that whole diatribe that we get into every day online that, you know, we're, we're hateful people, that we're oh, yeah. inhuman, that we're, you know, yeah. di displacing these people is, is cruel and unusual. No, displacing these people is necessary for multiple reasons, which we've already talked about. The goal in moving them on is to get them someplace where they can get a mailing address so they can start receiving mail and tax returns and whatever or to get a shower and a haircut so they can go apply for a job or best job market in who knows how long right everybody's hiring everybody's hiring everybody's trying to build up their business after covid and nobody wants to work absolutely no reason 
that a person can't get a job when you get a shower, get cleaned up, get a mailing address, all of which can be done at the urban campground. There's, there, all yeah, of which. absolutely. And there's always space available. All of the counselors, all of the groups, Rogue Cafe and other, others, there's a list that goes around, and it's a big list. It's like two pages that are employees that will hire somebody with a felony. Mm -hmm. As long as you're clean, they don't care where your mailing address right. is, they'll hire. Yeah. So the resources exist. Medford has been noted for being, for the city of its size, one of the best resourced cities in the nation for homeless people to, to receive treatment slash resources, whatever. Medford has also set the... Do you think that makes it a destination? Um, I think there is probably some of that. I know that... Come here one, for the free, free stuff and being left alone on the Greenway? Alameda Fire did a lot of that. Immediately after the fire, there was a substantial increase in the number of people who were contacted on the Greenway who had zero ties to the area. So they for the past three months and the three months prior, there was knew the, no reason. Knew the for free stuff from victims was coming, maybe. I think there was some of that. I also think that the uh, the passing of one ten brought a lot of people. Yeah. You want to do drugs? Come to yeah, Oregon. Come You're to not Oregon. going to jail for it. Yeah. You know. So there are no natural consequences to those. Yeah. Obviously, hey negative kid, hey choices. kid, we caught you shirt nut for the first time ever. You know what? No big deal. And if we catch you next time, it's going to be a few hundred bucks. And, Maybe. you know, I'm not making fun of our legislators or our law enforcement or our judges, but it's what it's been narrowed down to. And in my opinion, that kid could have used an intervention right then because mm -hmm. it's if you caught him, it's not the first time that they've taken it. And but it could be the time that saves their life if there was repercussions for anything in this world. Well, how many people were afraid to take drugs because they might get caught? You know, that's, a, that's a great deterrent. Repercussions kept me mostly on the yeah, no, straight and narrow as a kid. <laughs> mostly. 110A defunded a lot of treatment programs. Yeah. It, it, it siphoned money off of the state budget to go to this call line, this helpline, health check line, that allows people to avoid criminal charges and get their, their charge dismissed if they create the call, if they call the health check line and basically go, yeah, no, I'm not feeling like killing myself. Everything's fine. Thank you very much. So there are treatment programs who are now scrambling for money because 110 siphoned it all to a phone line that doesn't exist yet. Will not possibly be functional until October, maybe. But the law went into effect in January, of course. Um, and again, those unintended consequences. We're drawing addicts to the area. I uh, heard from a, a city leader just the other day that the city of Medford has seen an, a fairly substantial increase in the number of overdoses since 110, which is January, and the onset of the handing out of needles in mass. So I don't know where that, where that data came from, but... Yeah. Was told but to, to me that but to come out of the covid shutdown year where people couldn't see each other's face couldn't easily have conversations and some of the fellowship that keeps people happy in society during that whole time yet after it's over the needles and the mm -hmm. you know, I mean, mm -hmm. seem seems logical to me that it has to do with uh, those laws I, 110 yeah, the, the laws and, and the enabling yeah uh, and, and and that term gets bandied about quite a bit as well including by me uh, but when you are making it easy for people to remain in a state that, that that's bad for them, you hurt them. That that's yeah, that's enabling their their addiction. It's enabling their their choice to camp in places where they shouldn't be, to start fires, to do all the things that we are desperately afraid of and def desperately opposed of, to. We cannot let people continue to burn our valley down. No, nope. we've had eighty one fires in three months. That can't continue. It's too we much. Had what three ODs in the park in the past year, or something like that. Um, one just <coughs> recently. That's in, that's in the park and, and um, out in the hoods. Yeah, even, even worse. So, drug use is bad. Everybody knows it. It's no longer illegal in Oregon to have to possess or use in 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 user amounts, but it doesn't mean it's a good thing that should be encouraged. 
No. And you know, and anybody who thinks that they are helping by encouraging drug use, I think is deluded. Yeah, I, I think so too. I, I want better for those people. I mean, some of these stories that I look at, um, some of the arsonists that get arrested, they have 30 mugshots, mm-hmm. and, and, and the system doesn't even keep them all. I'm, I'm only the ones that I can look at that are recent. And you see somebody with 20 or 30 mugshots, and you can see over time the drug psychosis yeah. happening in the pictures. Yeah. Uh, everybody's seen uh, faces of meth and mm-hmm. you know, the transition from when they were young till when they have meth, and it could only have been five years, and they went from right. looking 18 to looking like they were 85. Uh, that does not describe the psychosis that comes along with that record. That record paints a picture, and that's why I, mm-hmm. that's why I post those mugshot panels on Skinner Group sometimes. Uh, it paints a picture, and and the picture is that person doesn't need any more freebies. The freebies are not helping them. They're never going to get out of it. So when I see some something like that, I post it. Same thing. Mm-hmm. People, ah, I hate people. You hate people. Right. No, I don't hate people. Maybe I love them more than you do. And that brings us to, I think, the, the crux issue for the Rogue Valley is a jail and treatment center. I tell you, yeah. You know, that that's really the culminating way to, you know, if, if drugs are not a crime anymore, and they're not, no. and that is the law, therefore we deal with it. But if we can't get people to involuntarily take treatment, we need places where they can voluntarily go and do so. Yeah. And I think, I, I've mentioned the main uh, program several times, they have converted prisons to in-resident treatment programs. And once you get through the treatment program and get a job, your charges are dropped. See, that's a good thing. You know, I like but that. we need a facility here that we right. can do and, that. And, we and, need. and uh, is it the city of the Medford or the county that was talking about building a a treatment center, a 24-hour treatment center came across at some point. I believe that was the city. They, they, yeah, and, uh, the the, the one-stop shopping 24-hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I agree for uh, mental illness and, and drug addiction specifically, but I agree because I've tried to find a bed for somebody on multiple occasions as I was trying to help people that are addicted, mm-hmm. and finding a bed is really hard. And I called 30, 31 places on a weekend yeah. throughout Oregon, never found a bed. Yeah, and uh, I found a bed they a, could have in two weeks. Yeah, they weren't still ready in two weeks. And that's not a that's not a Medford issue. That's a statewide yep, issue. That's which right. Is, you know, Kate Brown shut down the state hospital. Yep. And, uh, it's the, the those treatment programs are under attack by the existing governmental groups. And what needs to happen is people need to step up and speak up. Yep. We need people to voice their support for. A, the Greenway sweeps. B, a new jail that has enough beds, enough facilities to get people clean when they're brought in on drug charges. Get them to, to their court some, date. Get them to their court date. Because those court dates, the judges will tell you. Uh, Mejia said in a, in, in a public meeting, of, of 12 cases that he gets in a day, maybe two or four will show up. Right. So then yeah, we're stacking people up. 21,000 FTAs. Right. 21,000 FTAs I read at one point last year. There's always 15,000 or more FTAs. Yeah. We're stacking up those charges on people rather than getting them to help. So that treatment center sounds great. The jail sounds great. Uh, it's going to be expensive. Yeah. And it's going to... And it already failed once. It failed, it a, jail, jail, it failed a jail district. And this is going to this is going to make everybody hate me. This, this one Probably. statement is going to make everybody hate me, but... We need a Jackson County sales tax so that everybody foots the bill. All right, you and I go to go to Costco to buy our food or whatever. We're supporting a jail and treatment center. People living on the Greenway go to buy their whatever, their big gulps and their their freezer burritos or whatever. They're supporting the sales. Same sales taxes are usually not on food in other states. Right. Usually on right. not food and drink unless it's a. Uh, uh, Prepared restaurant style. Right, if you right. paid somebody to prepare it, you got to pay the normal price for it. A sales tax is the only way to take the load off the property owners. Yeah. The property owners are the only ones that pay tax in Boy. Southern Oregon, really. Um, this last house, 17 years ago, I had it built. It's tripled. Yeah. Property taxes. So it's distributing that weight evenly amongst everybody. And our tourists. Our yeah, tourists can absolutely. help out with the problem. Absolutely. And, and it's a very unpopular position to have in Oregon. Oregon it holds, is. It, holds its hat very loves high. Loves its tax-freeness. Tax yeah. And truthfully, 
if there were to be a reduction in property tax in exchange for that, I think people would buy it. Yeah. I think people would go, would move forward for it. But it's not likely to happen anytime soon. I don't think so either. Um, but yeah, we okay. So we need to clean the greenway. We need to the build a jail. The treatment center is either easier than a jail and that catches yes. anybody that's fed up now and they want to get clean and in that moment they're into it and that's when they're most able to catch able to learn things able to give it a shot the carrot needs a stick though there needs there to, has be, to be something at yeah, the other end of the line yeah there needs to be a goal <laughs> and a reason for them to continue because it's a tough process it's not easy and that's why we keep finding bodies on the greenway and that's why we keep you know having people od it's not easy to get past that. Everything, everything you need to know about dr drugs and incarceration is in a Johnny Cash song, right? <laughs> <laughs> see that, see that whistle blowing on down the line. <laughs> exactly. So, in order to actually solve this problem, and and to an extent, I agree with the people that say we need some housing. Absolutely, we do. It can't be free. It can't be all on the shoulders of property owners, and it can't be something that everybody who's taking advantage of that isn't putting some yes, sweat it out it, has, it can't be a free for all there needs yeah. to be uh, some kind of show of good faith from the people from the people getting the hand up because it needs to be a hand up and it can't be a blank check free housing for everybody again yeah. it just it just will handouts don't work hand ups yeah. can work yeah absolutely and I, I keep saying to people online you know instead of handing out a, a bottle of water and a, and a cheeseburger teach them how to police their own area clean up their own stuff if these camps weren't such absolute and utter disasters if the filth and the waste weren't just in such gobsmacking amounts yeah this conversation probably wouldn't be happening because no one would have noticed. I think if anybody is like that on the Greenway and meticulous about their trash and keeping things clean, they wouldn't be on the Greenway because there are people that would let them stay on their property. Right. But when they see what's going on the Greenway, you're not going to walk down the Greenway, pick one of those camps, piles of needles, piles of stuff, and say, you know what, I have 10 acres out here and we're only at one end of it. Why don't you come stay on my property? Right. I'll mow it so there's less of a fire danger. It's not going to happen. I had a conversation with somebody from Ashland today about the same thing. I know that Road Retreat is trying to put a, a camp down there. Yeah. And a small home uh, yeah, shelter as well. Yeah, they're, um, uh, pa they're called pallet houses. Right. Because they used to go on top of a pellet, but they're really just fold up little houses out of um, uh, corrugated plastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, it's kind of cool. It reminds me of a fishing hut in Minnesota, type. Yeah, thing. yeah, ice fishing hut. Yeah, yeah, and if I had no place to go, that would suffice until I got on my feet. Ashland is trying to put that in. The community members are pushing back, and this is Ashland, one of the most liberal no kidding. cities in Southern Oregon. Um, the community's fighting back because they see what the camps look like. Nobody wants that in their neighborhood. No, no straight thinking person does. That's not conducive to property values. It's not conducive to crime levels. It's not conducive to getting a decent night's sleep when people are having. Is, is having your home burned to the ground and it looking like a moonscape conducive well, to property values? The Oak Knoll fire. Yeah, which again, that burns a moon. Started fire. Yep. You know, I, 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 and I have friends that lost houses in that yeah. fire. It's risky having unsupervised, uncontrolled camps in your neighborhood. Yeah. It's risky having uncontrolled, unsupervised camps on the Greenway. We have Greenway fires. The Alameda fire was started by a person on the Greenway in Ashland, and I watched that thing. I was, in my, I was at work, and I watched that thing blow up. Yeah, I was on the south end of it. I didn't have to run, but I watched that thing blow up, and it was incredible. I watched it down the street from my house and didn't live in my house for two weeks, but nothing compared to my neighbors. I mean, right. talent is a moonscape. And, and, you know, they caught an arsonist that started it in Phoenix, which Phoenix not, might not have burned down without that second fire. Right. And the first one, I just got to say it, folks, 15 to 10 minutes, 15 minutes drive up Highway 66. They caught a guy from the start of that fi Alameda fire in Ashland lighting his van on fire full of accelerants. The guy has a torrid history with things like that. Um, mental illness, drug addictions, and and they know it was an arson fire. So there may not be probable cause to charge him. He got charged for arson on his van. Right. But let's face it. 
over and over and over again. A you know, I'm flashing them up behind person, us. Yeah. Those are all arson arrests. Uh, yeah, a reasonable person could assume yes. that, or reasonably suspect that, that there was some sort of tie there. I don't know the, anything about the background investigation of that, yeah. other than it was human caused and it was on the Greenway and it's gonna happen again. And it took out over 2,000 structures. Yeah, it's gonna happen again if we don't take steps. Yeah. And again, I know it's unpopular with some groups, but the reality is removing the campers removes the risk. I can't think of another fire that has happened on the Greenway just by chance. Lightning doesn't hit the Greenway, did, it hits the hills. Yeah, that didn't happen without some sort of human Interrupt. cause. Yeah, absolutely. So I, that's the that's the end game. You gotta yeah. remove the campers from the greenway. I think we've discussed a lot of things in here uh, in here today uh, that should be points of collaboration, no matter what political party people support, mm -hmm. no matter what they believe. And you know, if if they're if they strongly believe that uh, the homeless people on the greenway need help, me too. I don't think anybody disagrees. With yeah, that. if they if they uh, strongly d agree that drugs shouldn't be illegal. That's, that's law now. They're not. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of those people would say they strongly believe that we should expose ourselves to fire constantly burning down our towns. Yeah. So um, maybe we can meet, um, meet someplace to make that happen with our government. I just don't know what that picture looks like. So I'm, I'm hoping that the people that watch this video and follow this subject a lot offer some solutions. And, you know, not... Not the, come on, guys. I, we all like to joke around. I like to joke around too. But the the, the hang 'em high, the yeah. uh, 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 fifth, uh, the you know, twenty two shell, whatever that is. Those things that people say, they don't get us anywhere. They they keep people divided so much that we can't have solutions. So um, maybe we drop that and we all work to come up with ideas that may help our government get control of this. Absolutely, and. For those of you who have been following the Greenway page for, for some time and who are uh, frequent flyers and, and commenting and posting, A, I appreciate it greatly. B, the city council would love to hear your positive comments. All right. There are very few coming in because we're kind of in the process of making things better and there's less to, to hoot and holler about. But Send an email to the mayor. Send an email to the city manager. Send an email to the city council and tell them that you appreciate what's been done so far. Yeah. It's not done. It's not. It's not complete. And there is still risk. We are working towards that end. And I think we're getting to the point where we can see those fire numbers start to dip. I think we're at a point where we can see the camps disappearing. They're disappearing already. You drive down I-5 and it's much less. Oh, it's so way. much cleaner. Yeah. So, positive steps are being made. Let the city know that you appreciate those efforts. Give them a shout out for the livability team too. Absolutely. Those guys take all the heat from the people that disagree about the camping ban and it'd be nice for the citizens to let those folks know, guys and gals that are down there working on the greenway to try to get people out of there and into safer, safer positions and have to put up with all the screaming and posted videos and those kind of things and the town councilors that put up with screaming in their meetings. Let them know you appreciate what they're doing because before they were there, wasn't happening guys yep all this started in in april yeah you know yeah. and and thank you for all the the input you've provided all the letters all the emails etc it got us to where we are now makes a difference which is safer than we were before because the number of camps is reduced again it's not over it is a slow yeah. process we're working on it and i believe it'll happen S stay with it share this video to friends so everybody can kind of uh understand the discussions and what we face and we appreciate you watching absolutely thanks very much
for tuning in to the Scanner Group Crowdsource Crime and Safety Podcast with Ryan Mallory and Jared Bannery from Thief Hunter Labs. Make sure to subscribe today for notifications about the next show. Visit us at www.thiefhunterlabs.com or on Facebook as Thief Hunter.